setup. So I've got my looper, which will probably stay off the new board. I've got one, one, two, three, four, five pedals that are off the board. And I've got my current board. My current board has been pretty good to me. It is the Pedal Train Classic Junior. And as you can see, I've got the top row, one, two, three, four, five, and three on the bottom level. So that's my current setup. So what I'm moving to is just got myself a holy board. So this is known as the Dragonfly. This is their 2.0. They have a new one, a 3.0 that's out. Honestly, I do not know what the differences are. Um, so it's, so if you look, we have these, these screws right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? You have a number of different holes on the board. So you can go out in different sizes up to the current size, which is 37 inches. If you look at this part, <clears throat> and this comes off as well, this part is held on by wing nuts, right there. <clears throat> so that part can actually come off. So if you wanted to just maybe say have a few effects, one, two, three, four, maybe up on the top row, and you just wanted to be able to go like doot, 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 pull it off, and then boom, you are ready to go. It's got a nice little handle on it. Uh, it's called the amp top, if I didn't say that already. Also for, for band directors, right? That will fit a laptop, right? So you can put a laptop on there, you can put a tuner on there, you can put an iPad on there. And with each of the holes, you can see what they do is you take some zip ties and just go through one hole and through the other and goes right around. So, so for band directors or even maybe for marching bands, for pits, you know, because we're starting to see more and more the use of effects and triggers. If you're able to put all of that on there, right, and then mount that, or just put it on top of an amp, or you get some, you know, put some holes in some plywood and just screw those in, that sucker is great. And then you could just put your effects on there or whatever you need, and you are good to go. So yeah, might actually work out well for band directors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these pedals off. And all of these pedals are held on by Velcro, right? So I'm gonna grab this one because I've had some trouble with it. But if you look, there you go, comes right off, right? One of the problems I've been having is sometimes the Velcro comes right off. So I'm excited to try the zip ties and uh, see what we get out of it. So yeah, holy board, current board, yeah, so hopefully that, that'll clean some stuff up, and uh, we'll check back in when I'm done. All right, so here is the board all set up. Kind of changed the order a little bit and took out my AB pedal, but there's the DD3 uh, digital delay, the DD20 delay, bass micro synth, boss bass chorus, into the whammy, and then this is the part right here I had to get like a five foot cord to kind of run it back over here into the Electro Harmonics Big Muff, Bass Overdrive, Geiger Counter, Data Corruptor, Rainbow Machine, the Korg Miku, and the Crazy Nader. So there it is all set up on the board. It's set up pretty easily. Um, I did have, I had this fully extended out to 37, uh, but the bag that I got with it didn't go that far, so I had to take it in a little bit, but I still had, looks like, ample room for all my pedals, and it's pretty nice. So, you know, a little patch cables, and um, for power, what I did was I put a, uh, a squid around back, right there. And I zip tied that down and I left one or two open so that I can run the power supply with my foot <laughs> from the looper to here. Are you laughing at me? Yeah. And then from my loudspeaker to here. So I just have to pull two cords and then I can grab it here by the handle. It's a bit heavy because <laughs> of all the stuff that's on here. Uh, and there's a handle here and a handle here. 
Uh, it's made of that uh, aircraft grade aluminum, so it should be good to go. <clears throat> Some people have um, online have said that it, it kind of the color scratches off pretty easy. Uh, I could see where that might be an issue, although if you're using the board, it's going to get stretched, it's going to get used. Some people kind of meh about the, the uh, what do you call these, zip ties, but uh, they seem to work pretty well. Um, it, uh, it, does, it, it does limit where you can put some stuff at times, but really no worse, I guess, than, than a pedal train with Velcro. So, uh, yeah, it seems to be well made. This is great to have this upper rack here so that I don't, if I'm going to go hit this, I'm not going smash onto all my other pedals like I have in the past. And so that makes that easy. Uh, the only part, and, you know, this area is supposed to be left open, like if you had um, a wah-wah or a volume pedal or whatever, and I'm probably going to add an expression pedal at some point down the line, way down the line, because my wife is listening. <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> so I'll probably have to extend this out. Uh, I did put these back here. These are a little bit harder to hit with your foot. So I gotta watch out for the bass chorus, watch out for this right there to the Miku. And then this is sort of one of those like, kind of gotta kind of angle your foot. But, um, you know, I tried to put the ones that I use the most here and here. And these are the ones sort of the special special effect ones that uh, I don't use all that often. I mean, I use all of them often, but I use these a little less frequency than, of course, like the two delays and the whammy pedal and the chorus, which, uh, and the micro synth. Oh, like all, this is pretty much, this here is like sort of default settings. And then these are obviously the, the distortions and then, you know, the pitch killers and all the kind of weirdo stuff over here. So yeah, that's the holy board. It seems pretty good. I'll uh, gonna unplug it here and see how well it fits in the case that came with it. Um, this is an older case style, and there's not a whole lot, if any, padding, but, uh, but it's a pretty neat bag, and uh, I'll show you that in just a sec. So I've got it turned around here, you can see. So there's the power supply. Uh, I'm hoping to get maybe an actual power supply at some point. But this kind of comes really in handy with one because got plenty of, plenty of room for all these big wall warts. This one is for the whammy pedal. This one here is for the microsynth. They don't like to play well together. And then back in there is my one spot, which is what I'm running most of the power on this board from, except for, like I said, the microsynth and the whammy. Okay, so here's the bomber bag that came with this. Uh, I bought this used off a of reverb. It's a kind of well-built case. It's got a nice seat belt strap for your shoulder. It's got a good handle here. It's good and sturdy. It's got snaps on it, which honestly I'd prefer the zipper, which is I think what he, he did on the newer model. There's a nice little, little uh, storage compartment here. You can keep uh, zip ties and a pair of needle nose pliers in there. So I'll probably need them. Yeah, here's a board. You just grab it like this, pull it straight out. The inside is, is yellow, uh, and uh, on their website it says so it makes it easier to find stuff in the dark, which I think is pretty ingenious. And um, yeah, no, no real padding to speak of in this bag. I know in the newer ones there's some more padding. And uh, so maybe we can get uh, Chemistry Design Works to send one, and then we'll do a review of that. So. If anybody knows Chris, tell him I said, hey. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the bag feels, feels good, feels sturdy. Um, I think for traveling, maybe like if I'm going to fly or, or something like that, I might just put in like a little bit of foam just to kind of protect the pedals a little bit. And, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Cool, thanks for watching.